such an honor to have all of us here. Karibuni Sana Lapid Leaders Africa. My name is Rispa Wanjanjage. I'm going to be your host for the day. Today, we are on the second, can you believe it? We are on the second episode of the Rebirth webinars. So we have been doing these webinars as a series and we have decided that we would like to do 12 episodes in 12 months of the Rebirth webinars at Lapid Leaders Africa. Why Rebirth? Because Rebirth is, the, is our theme for the year and we are looking at it as an year of reinvention. People going through different changes from a lot of people who have graduated from school and now they're looking at ways of how to navigate a new set of 
responsibility, a new structure, a new schedule. And I can only imagine a lot of other changes that all of us could be going through. I'm very, very happy to be your host for the day. Allow me to recognize the authority of my boss and CEO, Esther Moniki, the founder of Lapid Leaders Africa. She is the one courtesy of whom we have a platform such as this where we can talk with each other. So we would like you guys to introduce yourselves by stating your name and where you're listening in from. You can do that on the chat as a way for us to ensure that we have a level of order. We have muted everyone and we will only unmute anyone who needs to talk on a need to do basis so that we have a sense of clarity on what we're saying and so that there are no audio interruptions. That said, I have already mentioned guys that we are so happy to have you. A lot of my colleagues are here as well. So it's good to see that. I see a lot of people that I know either from school or from church or on other or on other platforms where I have been, and I'm so glad to have all of you. So without any further ado, I would like us to start by doing something very special that we haven't done before, which is that I would like to invite a friend of mine and a, a friend of Lapid Leaders Africa who is a poet and who is someone who's really able to do a piece that connect with what we are talking about today, which is around reinvention, which is around, you know, getting the courage to get up again after maybe you have been stuck, after you've gone through challenges. And I love the piece that he's about to do. So allow me to introduce my friend. My friend is Jessa Oketch Malela. He goes by the pen name Malela Poet on Instagram and I believe on all his social platforms. And he will do a piece that is dedicated to himself as a letter to myself. Without any further ado, Karibu Sana Jasta Oketch Malela. Thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, I don't need to say anything more other than uh, go ahead to this piece that I will share with you from my first book, which is called Pieces of My African Soul. Uh, so here you go. You are too perfect, I presume. Never have you slipped or fallen. Never have you been caught in sin so deep. Your mode failure calls useless. I'm naive because I give love to the world until I'm left with none. In my quest for your approval, I have lost myself. Every bit of my dream that I build crumbles before I fix the last piece. My life is a trail of mistakes that I work so hard to erase, but you keep redrawing them. I have worked and sweated. My skin is beat so that the deep wounds have become part of it. I'm both perfect and imperfect. After all the mistakes I have worked, I have sweated to win you back and win back your trust. I have chosen to fight when wounded. I have chosen to love endless. I have chosen to dream right. I have chosen optimism. I want to build my dreams to the last bit. I want you to be proud of me. I want to make something of myself. I want you to trust that in the darkness, I will still embrace light. I want you to know that I hold my beliefs to my chest. I want you to know that I am human. I'm a human who's got principles. All I have been chasing was for you to say, good job, keep at it. You've made a mistake, but improve next time. You're gonna be a star someday. You may have seen only darkness in me, maybe because you are too perfect. But I read this today, that love without truth is sentimentality. It supports and affirms us, but keeps us in denial about our flaws. Truth without love is harshness. It gives us information, but in such a way that we cannot really hear it. I will work until when you support and love me right, because I feel all alone. I'm all alone in my world and I need you. Sometimes I wonder if I still have the strength left, but I shall keep working, for I know I will eventually make it. Thank you. 
Wow. Wow, you know, that is such an accurate description of where the kind of conversation that we're going to have today because it, it's us addressing the fact that we are the first line of encouragement when it comes to our own growth. Like you're never going to come across people who will encourage you. Yes, you will, but the first line of encouragement for anyone really should be themselves. And I love the way that he says that, I know that someday I'll be a superstar. I know that someday I'm going to win. I know that some days I'm scared, other days I'm afraid, but there is still a lot of hope for me. So I speak to me. I mean, Jeff, thank you so much for that. And now I would like to go straight on to the next part of our conversation today, which is I'm going to introduce our guest for the day. But perhaps before she comes on, maybe you guys are curious, what is my relationship with Lapid Leaders Africa? I am an alumni of the Lapid Leaders Africa program. I took the program in 2018, but I was still in my campus. And now I am working at Lapid Leaders Africa as a growth associate. And part of my work that I'm very excited that I get to do is that I get to host such events for us, just for us to grow together. So our guest for the day is the one and only Kiri Kagiri. You guys know her from radio, for those of us that have listened to Hope FM for the past, for at least the past three years. Kerry Kagiri has been a radio presenter. She is also a TV host. She is also a person who loves, loves, loves biking and even, I believe, owns a motorcycle, but she'll be telling us more about that. Kerry is a musician and she is also an event host. And I would believe that that's just a part of who she is. And so without any further ado, Kerry Kagiri, Karibu Sana, Lapid Leaders Africa. Asante Sana, thank you for having me. I'm just so humbled. I'm like, Mimi, like really, Mangalia, the whole dunia can choose. So I'm just like really, really humbled oh. to be here, to be speaking to brilliant people. I think where we know each other also is from the spirit because I was also in KU. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So when I had you mention Ooh. KU when we were starting out. I was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you so much. Honestly, we're going to jump right into this interview. Uh, but perhaps I would like to bring everyone here up to speed. What we are talking about today is reinventing yourself for success. And we're going to, to look at how one can do that through looking at Kerry's journey from how did she get into media? What are some of the challenges that she's come across that have, you know, molded her into who she is today? And I would want to note right now, very categorically, if you have any questions for Kerry, now is the time to start writing them down in the chat. But I will go to my first question to you, Kerry. So we know you with all the titles that I have introduced you with, yeah? But if you were to introduce Kerry Kagiri, how would you introduce her? Oh, wow, that's a hard one. Um, so Kerry Kagiri is... Um, a creative, she is innovative, she's fearless, she's bold, and very interested and excited about growth and the next thing in life. Generally, she's always looking out for what the next thing is. I think that's what I'd say. <laughs> All right, wow, thank you. I, I can agree with that, both creative, all of it. I mean, I have to say that I've been your, like, is it possible to have a career crush? Like, <laughs> but I think you know that I have been stalking you on Instagram since your days of being a presenter at, at Hope Radio, because I would listen to your show in the morning. If there's something interesting that I hear, I would repost. And so it's so glad to hear you introduce yourself from that perspective, you know, and. For now, I would like to go to another part of our interview, which is, so we know you as Kerry Kagiri, you have introduced yourself as well. And a lot of us might think that the story of Kerry is the story that we see today. She's glamorous, she's in all of these events. She is, you know, 
she has grace to be hosting a lot of events and just be in a lot of wonderful spaces. But what is your story really as Kerry Kagiri? It's a story of God's grace and divine direction through obedience to number one, accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior, who in turn just leads me to the right places that I need to be at. It's a story of favor. It's a story of mercy, uh, undeserved, unmerited. It's a story of grace, really. Um, you know, everything that you know God has helped me to do up to this point, just through his own strength, not through my knowledge or through anything I know, because at uh, in university, I started something very different, although it did have something to do with what, you, what we're talking about. And that was theater arts and film technology. Those are very different things altogether, but they all still, you know, come. They also come uh, to marry in a sense. And so it's been very, very exciting to learn, to grow and to, to experience what, what was planned for. And I don't even think I'm there yet. Like I'm still going to the core because I still have dreams. Sometimes I, I think about what God is doing and I'm like, guide me, you know, you, you picked me to do that. And the, the one thing that has held me so close to being able to achieve everything I think I'm achieving and I'm going to achieve in the future is the faith and the unquestioned belief in the power there in that's inside of me uh, that is outside trying to work it out so that I can get there. Like that's the one thing I'd say in, in my whole journey. It's been a faith journey. It's been a faith. It's just been, I believe and I know and what I know what I know. And when I know it, I go for it. No questions asked. I stopped asking people for permission. I just go and I do it and, 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 and God helps me. So I think that summarizes what I'd respond to in terms of, in terms of the journey. It's really been something that, because we all, everyone on this, um, everyone on this uh, video, everyone who's watching us online has that, you know, divine purpose that's been cut out for them. And so we waste so much time second guessing or being afraid or not being connected to the source. And so um, I, I stopped doing that. I stopped doing that a very long time ago and I've just been going for what's mine with no, no apologies to anybody. In fact, there are jobs I go to and I'm like, oh yes, yeah. I'm done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm done. Ah, okay. And so, you know, my question would be, were you always this bold or is there a story to something that has borne your boldness today? I think I was raised as a very confident child. My parents um, knew that I was gifted from the time I was born. I was born out of love, just pure love. And so... My parents put me out there. My dad is actually like a, a like he like in fact he does something on Facebook right now called Worship with Tronica Gay. Please go and like well, yeah, I got a 26 subscriber. Go and then he like more subscribe. He's he's also very confident. You know, he's just playing his piano, talking about Jesus. My mom is on the other end, just got her PhD and she started her undergraduate after all of us had had our undergraduate. So those are the people I come from. Very, very audacious people, very strong. Uh, people but I have second guess myself in terms of talent because I'm like mm, am I really that gifted like am I really that good but I always shut myself up and I'm like there's no way God can ask me that question that's a question from the enemy mm. God would only encourage he wouldn't say are you why you you know sometimes when I ask me, why me but why not me who else yeah you know so yeah. it's been a process that's been a process Okay. Yeah, but I thank God for the foundation. The foundations were quite solid through and through. Mm, all right. Well, thank you so much. You know, and I love I love that because I love the the questions I'll be doing as follow-ups from there. But allow me to do a shout out to this up uh, there are quite a number of people that are watching us from like LinkedIn Live. So we welcome you guys. Please introduce yourselves as well on LinkedIn. State your name and where you're tuning in from. If you have any question to Kerry Kagiri also, please post it so that we can ask his ads. So that we can ask as we proceed with our interview today. So Kerry, I want to come back to you. So this year, our theme as an organization is rebirth. Rebirth in the sense that 
we believe in the power of second chances. We believe also that people will always keep growing. In fact, one of the key takeouts from the last webinar that we had on rebirth is that rebirths are not optional. So people who try to fight that kind of change are just literally, they're fighting a losing battle. So for me, maybe my question to you would be, what does rebirth mean for you as Kerry? Um, I think you're muted. Sorry, I'll keep muting myself because I'm trying to do, um, sometimes there's a lot of noise from the background. So I'm sorry, I keep muting myself. So keep unmuting me. Rebirth. What does the word rebirth mean to me? I think it's just a, a second chance. And it's a second chance to come back new and fresh and alive. Um, that's what it is to me. Like it's just a whole new. It's a whole new opportunity. It's a whole new opportunity but then the good thing with the rebirth is you're still coming with some leakage mm. you know it's a, you're not coming blank <laughs> yeah so yeah, I, yeah. I think that's what it is i have a rebirth going on right now so this is my hair i've been wearing a, a wig all through the the weeks and i just like went to the salon and i was like can i try a silk press and they did it and i was like this is this is a rebirth for me i have a wig that looks exactly like this and i paid so much money for it so I'm getting a rebirth <laughs> with my hair. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, first, I have to admit, I thought this was a wig. Everyone so, thought okay. so. This is not a this wig. Are, Guys, this is this not a wig. Some... I wish I could bring the wig. It looks exact. Like the one I had uh, over the weekend when I was hosting um, the RAF. So mm. I have a rebirth. Uh, so I have a leakage and I have. <laughs> hey, got it. Got it, got it, got it. I have to so, yeah. So rebirth, fresh start that you're coming in with some really good information. Like you're not coming in black. It's like mm -hmm. you have a chance to start again. You will be already a ahead of your class because you know what you need to do. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's what I, I like that. I like that a lot. And the reason why I do is because a lot of people sometimes feel that when change is happening, because rebirth is, you know, by all means, rebirth is actually change. But there's a lot of people who get scared by the idea of change. And so I love that your view of what a rebirth is, is that it's a second chance you are getting where you also have some material to back you up. Which brings me to, now that Kwanza, you see, do you have a rebirth? So I've been listening to you uh, from Hope FM for quite some time. And then on 6th June, you took a break or maybe I would say you left uh, radio broadcasting. So my question would be, why, why was that? If you don't mind my prying on behalf of all of us here. Uh, it was 6th January and it was time. I just thought the best way to transition out of a contract is not to resign. It's just my, my contract was three years. It was a very good term. I served it faithfully. I really enjoyed it. But I honestly felt within my spirit, God calling me to something more. And that would mean offering my services and my skills to Hope Media and Sitam in general as a consultant. And so I put that out there for them. And I said, I'd love to consult with you, but I cannot do the, the eight to five or, you know, we are moving to a season where everyone is looking for more hybrid kind of work. And that's me included. I want to work in a space where I can serve you and I can also serve other people uh, because there's just so little time and there's so much to do. And so I, I realized one of my biggest, biggest resources in my life is time. And I have to be guarded. I have to guard it very jealously. And so I'm still serving. I'm actually doing the show. It's still on Hope TV, still on Hope Media. I left very well. I left with the blessings of the bishop. I left with the blessings of the head of media. So I still have felt so hard to jar. You know, I've really worked on, I worked on relationships, which is my biggest, biggest capital as well. So yeah, I think that's what I'd say for now about that mm -hmm. transition. Ah. And changes are inevitable. A change is as good as a rest. I love change. You love change? Can I just like start there? What are some of the myths 
that people have about change that you think everyone should get to know, at least from your perspective as Kerry? I feel like we're always holding on to stuff so much, including things. Um, and things come and go. People have had, you know, properties burned down all the way to the ground. People have had such difficult, um, difficult things because of just holding you. We hold, we hold too much um, onto things. And so, so I'd like, I'd, I'd say, you know, I, I feel like it's very important for us to, to always see and not be so attached to, I'll say number one, material things, because you know, coming out of a salaried, pensionable job is a crazy thing for many people, for example. But the kind of freedom I'm experiencing now and being able to serve people and still, by the grace of God, getting a lot of income, probably even more than I ever did while in, 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 in you know, while employed, I I don't know. I don't know if I, I would I would sacrifice that for anything. And also just realizing that life will always present changes to you. Like there's always something new happening in the world. And so the less adaptable you are, the less you'll be able to achieve. But the more adaptable you are, the more you'll be able to absorb and to get. And so I know there's this thing about also personalities. I hear Mimi, Sisi, Atuko, Ivo, all that. But it's not about personality. It's about adaptability. How well are you able to adapt to a situation? How well are you able to adapt to change? And so always when there's a change coming, and you know, this thing was said a long time ago, a change is as good as a rest. When you have a change, you even have a new space, a new beginning. The phone was just like, Mimi in the canal, boyfriend, and it's a very toxic relationship because you're not willing to, to change. And, and, and you just, because you know him, and, and I mean, everything is easy. I feel lack of change is also easy. And doing an easy life will cost you so much. It will cost you years. It will cost you your purpose. It will cost you your, your destiny. And so... Mm. You know, people are like, oh, I don't want to leave Kenya. Me, you know, my family is here. What is your family helping you? Go, go abroad, go prosper, go and, and see different cultures, go and encounter different people. Mm. So, mm. yeah, I think, I think that's what I'd say about your question, really. Mm. Change mm. is well, inevitable. And the, the, the quicker you train yourself to be absorbent and adaptive, the better life you'll live. And I'm, I'm glad you shared that because I'll be coming to you shortly to find out. So how do you become so adaptable to change? Because, you know, at least science does show that uh, our brains always interpret change as a threat. So it's, it's normal, like it's very, it's understandable that yes, people can get stuck. But maybe before I get there, there's a question here that I feel resonates with something I was to ask you from Masi Chebet. So she's asking, you are... You are now in TV, you're hosting events. I mean, Juicy too, you just hosted the Kenya Theatre Awards. I was like, wow, Katie, Yanni, you just decided. Um, but like, you have a lot of tasks that if I follow your Instagram or just social media, I can tell. So she's wondering, how are you able to actually manage these different responsibilities without dropping the ball? Wow, I'd say no is a love language so i say no to very many things but it's also my year of yes so i say yes to other things and so mm. just learning how to balance what's within my what's within my my purpose and my season and so i'll say everything i'm doing is very aligned everything i'm doing if you look at it they are really not who could have, who could have, who could have, as it looks like it's it's a lot it's very very aligned in a sense and i don't even post half the stuff i do I don't. Mm -hmm. So I've learned how to allow what is right for me, mm -hmm. pursue it faithfully, mm -hmm. and do it well. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and I do say no. I do say a lot of no's. I do say a lot of no's um, in, in this season. However, um, when it's something aligned in my purpose, in my plan, I'm on it. I'm on it with like no one's business. And we all have 24 hours in a day. 
I don't sleep for eight hours. I don't sleep a third of my life. So I do more things. In fact, the most I can sleep is five hours. Like, you know, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. So I'm able to pick up and absorb more, even not only in Kenya, but even working with people who are outside the country who are mm-hmm. in different hours. Mm. So I'm just getting it right now, especially because I'm in a season where I'm single, I'm alone. Uh, this is the time when I can be able to do even way more than than probably, you know, when a time will need me to be more, you know, centered and mm. uh, raise a family. So I think I love also orga- organizing, having a really good schedule, mm. being able to, you know, set out those lots of time again time is a resource we're using it very well that's my number one rule for this year so mm. i think that's how i respond i'm doing everything that's aligned everything's aligned mm. everything is aligned of course someone is wondering so how did you get to be so aligned you know so like i'll put a pin on that thought because i'm sure i'll be asking it at some point um proceeding shortly just from what we we have talked about so Part of why we're doing this rebirth webinars is because primarily part of the people that are in this call, a lot of them are students, a lot of them are people from very different backgrounds. So there's actually a question I have received from someone that I would really love to hear your thoughts, which is, Kerry, what would you tell someone who came from a background that did not really build their confidence or build up you know, the kind of gusto that you uh, you were able to experience from your family? Like, how do you think they can recover the lost years in their adulthood? I think, first of all, God can help them. He's my ultimate source, to be very honest. Um, it takes help. Like, if you can honestly go for therapy and get that kind of emotional support where you can be able to look deep in and introspect, some of us don't have confidence because we are proud. We are proud, you know, we are too proud to, 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 to do certain things or to be certain, you know, in a certain way. It's not even the lack of confidence, it's just your own deep arrogance. But also, I understand the people who came from homes, maybe some of even were, you know, born in situations where you, you were not wanted, you were, maybe even you have gone through abuse and all that kind of pain and all that. I'd say it's important to get uh emotional support you can be able to heal you can be able to learn and acquire skills for confidence it's able to that's possible to learn and and make it more of a skill than an innate being of who you are but i'll say it's very very important for you to to be in spaces where you are wanted and where you are loved go where you're celebrated Mm. go where you're celebrated don't have friends who put you down. Don't have friends who who are, are frustrating you. No, go where you're celebrated. Go to places where you're given opportunities to, to, to practice what you're actually good at. Um, and I'm not saying go to yes people only, but I'm saying find the right, the, the right healthy environment that actually encourage you to bloom. And they're there, they're available. I'm sure they are. I also think one thing I've done that's practical for me is doing affirmations every day and waking up Mm -hmm. and saying, I am brave. I am ready for change. I am preparing for success. And I say to myself over and over and over and over and over until I know it and no one can change that. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. affirmations are so important. Say to yourself, say to yourself that I am, I am able, I am capable, I am worthy. Mm. Yeah. So wow. write down affirmations and do it every single day and you'll see yourself bloom. And I love that. I love that. And I truly hope that that helps us answer the question. That question was actually from Bridget Mzaweli, but I'm sure that it's a question that a lot of people are able to relate to. So, you know, think about your affirmations, at least Kerry has said. And I believe even being on a platform such as this already is a way to for someone to start recovering their time because you hear things maybe you would not have had before. And so if you have any more questions, please feel free to keep sharing them on the 
on the chat for the people on LinkedIn. We are still with you. We are waiting. Any questions that you have, we're going to answer. Now, I would like to go on. So we're talking about rebirth, Kerry. And I'm just wondering, what are some of the most significant changes that you've had to go through? And as Kerry maybe comes back, there's someone who's uh, asking here, asking the chat, like, what are you hearing and what are your thoughts based on ways to recover the lost years? Yes, please feel free to share that uh, completely on, on the chat. And we would really, really like to to hear what your thoughts are, like what, what do you think people can do to recover time that they have lost, you know? Share that in the chat, we would really like to read your thoughts. And also, the more you share your thoughts, maybe someone else might be helped by your perspective around that issue. So that brings me to, Kerry, now I come to my question. So what are some of the most significant changes that you have been through in life? Significant say, changes. Okay, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. Well, well, some of the significant changes I've been through life is, let's say like moving houses. <laughs> That's a significant change. Um, I've had to move houses. I, I, I live next to where I work. It's my number one rule. Mm -hmm. So I've ended up moving houses like 199 times. Like if the office moves, I also move. If it's not my house, why am I paying rent in Nigeria and I work in the other side of town? So mm -hmm. that's my number one rule. I pack up, I get a good mover, and I move. Nothing personal, no strings, no rings. I tell my landlord, my work has moved. What do I do? Um, another significant change has been maybe my eyesight. So I came from, you know, having really poor eyesight as a child uh, to, to actually, you know, from really poor eyesight as a child to doing laser and having 2020 vision and then going back to terrible eyesight. And that was really, really difficult for me. Uh, you know, now I had to adjust everything like back to glasses, back to contacts. I think it was just a very, very difficult season because I really, like for a girl, once you make my lashes, you want to show up, you can't have one of our glasses. Like, what's that? So for me, I know it sounds petty to people who have 2020 vision, but for me, it was very, very hard. And also just not being able to see generally. It's a really hard thing uh, uh, for someone. And it costs so much more to like try and live a, a normal life. Um, what else? Uh, a significant change that I've gone through probably is, is uh, work-wise, like career-wise. So there's a season of my life where I was acting on screen and on stage and then jobs to Zikaisha. And so I had to take up another job. And the job I thought of doing since I was at home doing nothing was Uber driving. And so I was an Uber driver. I did like 700 trips. I was humble. I used to open people doors. I had candy for them. I was just working and then I moved from that directly to uh, ministry which is full-time ministry at uh, Nairobi Chapel so I've had those like work transitions in and out in and out I don't know why I can't think of like another one but I think those are the ones I'd mentioned for now mm -hmm. all right no that's good enough and I can I can really connect Kwanzaa with the idea of moving jobs. I think moving jobs has been the scariest thing for me. Like myself, I just, I just recently finished school and I used to work part-time in a law firm because I'm professionally trained in law, but I've always known in my heart, there's spaces where I want to serve and I know what matters to me where work is concerned, but it doesn't change the fact that it has been such a scary ish season of oh my god this is so different from what I have known before and so I'm glad at least you can relate to that changes so allow me to ask you a question that someone has asked his name is Nelia Sara hello Kagiri what would you advise a third year student who doesn't know where to start I thought of starting with internships but I have been receiving regrets and can she also like touch on building meaningful networks and how to go about it? But yeah, let's start with someone who is feeling stuck. Have you ever been stuck, Kerry? A lot. I get stuck a lot in my mind. Uh, and it's because of worry. 
and because of um, not accepting the season you're in. So it's very easy for someone who is worried, anxious, not to accept their season they are in, not to accept the, the transition that is they're being called into. And if you're in third year right now, your priority is study and study hard and prosper in that uh, particular space. And so I think that should be a, a very, very, a very, very important part to evaluate. Where are you now? Where are you now? What do I need to do now? Because um, I remember one thing I was stuck with was a transition um, I was working on and I felt like nothing is moving in my life. But when I looked right and left, I thought, wow, I'm being developed. I'm being developed in terms of perseverance. I'm being developed in terms of network. And I was like, God, I actually prayed this. I told God, don't move me from here until I do the work that I'm supposed to do. And so I started being faithful. I started coming on time. I started doing, you know, well. And then I noticed the shift happening. And I was like, wow, I'm getting a ready. In fact, by the time I'm leaving, I'm like, ah. Am I ready really to live again? Because I was praying for that move. And so don't be caught up with, with the season you're not in. Be stay, stay grounded. Stay, stay in the season you're in. Stay in the right place. Mm. Yeah. Oh, you know, try to stop being in the season you're not in. Can I say you're a preacher? Like, hey, Preach. that is so true. I think I I think one of our biggest problems is fighting, fighting with where we are, fighting with who we are, fighting, fighting with the lessons we need to be learning, like telling yourself, by now you should be yep. more disciplined. Well, yep. if you're not, you're not. So then probably the question is, so how do we start being disciplined? So I hope that Nelia's your question has been answered. It's like start with being faithful where you are. Yes. Okay, so Carrie, the reason why I asked like whether you have been stuck before. I was like, I would like to hear a specific situation where you were actually stuck because I'd like to dig a bit more on that. Uh, maybe the situation where I was stranded to like do my own music. I feel like that's one of the places where I've been imprisoned for the longest. And so I, I was so used to just singing in church, doing BGVs for other people, singing in the bathroom. Yet I know God has called me to write and record music. And I remember during my time, uh, by the grace of God, I got to go to Bethel, which is worship school um, in California. And I did something called Worship You. And at Worship You, there was Tasha Cobbs, there was Chris Tomlin. All these guys were just training and import, you know, impacting. There was um, this, I love her, Brooke Ligatwood, uh, who's a new wine, wrote new wine. She's actually, I think, almost like the, one of the, the senior people at our Hillsong. And so during one of the lessons, it was a songwriter's class and guys were supposed to present a song they've written. And I applied for that class, because something in my head a while back told me, you're not a songwriter. Why do you think you're, you're able to write music? And so, but I said, since I talk at Kenya all the way to California, because this was a very intimate class with the coaches. And so one of the guys called Sean Fuchs and a chick called Christine DeMarco and Kali Heitingo. If you Google them, you'll see them. They're really good ministers and, and have written a lot of good music, even just as songwriters, but also as ministers. Um, Kelly said to me, you are going to write songs that congregations are going to sing in Africa. And I'm like, I don't know anything about songwriting. And so I had completely put that thing in my head that I'm not able to write. I want to fast forward 2022. Uh, my high school boyfriend uh, <laughs> called me and he's like, Harry, like, surely, he's like, book a studio session. I'm going to take you and I'm going to help you. And so I booked mm -hmm. a studio session. And the day he was supposed to, we were supposed to go, and this is maybe why we broke up. He didn't show up. So I'm there wow. with the producer to Nangaliana, like, okay, so he's like, madam, <laughs> um, 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 session. let's make it work. Mm -hmm. So he asked me, do you have any song you've written? Me, I'm like, I, maybe in my notes, I have things I write. So mm -hmm. I saw the words for the song that I released uh, July 1st, 2023, 2022, called uh, In Your House. And you guys need to check it out. It's on YouTube. It's on all 
social media, I mean, all, you know, streaming platforms in your house by Kerry Kagiri. And so mm. I it on, on my notes were the words, I want more, I need more, give me more of your glory. And I think I wrote this just as notes, but we turned it into a melody. And then I was like, but yeah, I really like the verse, Isaiah 40, 42. We put it in there. And mm -hmm. we have a whole five minute song written by Kerry Kagiri, who is not a songwriter. No mm. one else helped me write this song. And so that's one of the areas I've been stuck. Now, I want to say that 2020, 2022, when I released that song, I was 32. I'm 32 now, yeah. Um, I, I was turning 32, I was turning 32, I was 31, I was turning 32. So how many years has that been of active ministry and not being able to write because Mimi is songwriter. Nambaka ni pate songwriter ni andikie sita imba. The other song I done before actually was written by Mwenye Hake and he wrote it and we collaborated. It's called Zaidi. It's also on YouTube. And that was like in 2014. Mm -hmm. So I have been, that's one of the areas where I really needed to undo and and speak to myself. I used to meet artists who are like brands on them. They're caring. I, the one person who always like, this is me to date is, he's called Guardian Angel. Guardian Angel meets me and he's like, when he joker. Because he kisses me and I'm like, write me a song. Me, I don't know how to write, mm. but I've undone that mm. up to this moment, and mm. I have real evidence of actually a song um, yeah. that is written, you know, completely by me. And by the grace of God, you know, I've recorded more songs, and I, I, you know, as time goes by, I'm gonna re release them. So that would be one of the areas where, even after being prophesied to by mighty people of God, I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. Ah, great. And I really, really, really thank you for that. You know, a lot of people sometimes assume that, oh, you know, you know, the people we see on the media, they don't go through any challenges. Because you see now someone, someone only sees the song. I went, I went to YouTube, I'm like, who can we release the song? So I'm over here, I'm listening. I would not have told for even a second that this is something you've actually been stuck and you've told your mind that you're stuck for clearly what has been quite a long time. And I hope that anyone who's present here and they are feeling stuck, the first and foremost, being stuck is not a preserve of only some people and that some other people do not get stuck at all. And that you're not the only person that has felt stuck. So if there's anything we can do here, let's validate that for you. So, but I would like to go to another part still of this conversation of being stuck. What, what do you think helped you to get past that stuckness? Like something that also someone can take away from this call and you know start applying. I think just being fed up, being fed up. I was tired. Mm. I was tired of, and you know, sometimes you listen to other people, like in this case, it's a music thing. I listen to some musicians and I'm just like, what is that? Mm. What is that? You mm. know, like I wanted to give a new sound. Mm. I felt deeply in my spirit. This was the time. Yeah. And I was just fed up. And I think there are people who will never be able to do anything until they are fed up with where they're at. You have to know you deserve more. You have to know that you can get more. You have to know that you can be disciplined to work for more and put in the work. Mm. I think I was just fed up. And I think you just need to get fed up of your mediocre, basic mm. life and step up, you know. I think it has to get to that point where you're like, eh, day shivi. Yani nilizali wapa, nitaishi hapa, watotongo taku hapa, nita wapa, nita kula, forever and ever and ever. Mm. You just have to want it. You have to want more. You have to want more for yourself. Mm. And you have to go and get it. But then there's nobody who will wake you up and tell you, oh, mommy, see, I'm telling you, people always like, Kenny, where you find you, find you, find you, find you. But they're not helping me to do it. Mm. So you yourself, by yourself. You must wake up and know I deserve more. I, I can get more. And the fact that you keep dreaming and thinking about more, it means God has put it inside you. And so please go get some more. Mm. Just, just want more for yourself. One more for your family. Me, I'll, I'll really, I really want to make my parents proud. I want to, to, to change the trajectory of my family um, and, and what we have and where we are at. I want more. In fact, I'm so hungry. Because I'm like, so I'm like, 
sinyi muende mu create event yenu mufanye you know <laughs> like i just want more there's more and we can uh, just this go get it mm yeah wow i like that i like that and i would like i'd like to you know like you we have to want more for ourselves so let me just ask you this on a on a like light note kabisa so uh i know you're in biking i have seen that you're part of the bikers association of kenya or something like that was that part of wanting more explain how you got into biking So I want in in 2015 2016 I, I went to a baby shower and one of the chicks who rocked up and she's become a good friend of mine and Jerry Mwangi rocked up in a bike and I was like what so I went and I asked her can I sit on your bike she said yes I sat on it I'm like how does someone ride this thing and that thing was planted in my head now I want to say something as I, as I say that anything that you have planted in your head that you need to do in your life you better find time to do it because if you don't do it you yourself you're going to really really regret you're really going to regret to not do it um so i sat on it and i was like one day i'm going to do this and it happened uh 2021 i was at home the i had a break a one week break and every time i have a break if i'm working or not working i want to learn a skill and i was like oh biking so i called up the training school i'm like ni how much all right they're like ah mm. it's um they give me the figures like 10k then and then i i paid and i went and i learned how to ride mm. by the time i was blinking it's january and i'm shopping for a bike and i bought my first bike i still have her she's called bambina she's my best friend she's just outside right now <laughs> yeah and so i met so many people so many communities i've met so many friends um I've done so many initiatives including tree planting including taking care of the homeless like it's just been a really really exciting journey. Mm. That's how it started as simple as that. I went to training school the next thing mm. I'm shopping for a bike and I bought a bike. Mm. And God is, and, and and God is our provider really. Let me just say I saw him I literally provide for me money to buy that bike. Mm. I love yeah. that. I love that because it speaks to you know like those times when we are when you're stuck now that i was still a bit on that because i know that's something that's very relatable for people i don't say my age i feel so familiar with that come but yes like this age especially of you know 20 from 22 to 26 there i don't know what happens but we get it's like you get all of these thoughts in your head i am not moving i am not moving and somehow we think it's like magic is going to come and then suddenly you will move i love the way you are like you know what you want more go out if you have i'm so shocked you had a break during your break you choose to learn a skill people go to netflix you know they talk on netflix and chill <laughs> okay so wait baby so kwani what i'll just pause there because i was like so you don't netflix and chill like your time i do not sometimes to be honest i've not mm-hmm. had time to like watch a movie recently mm-hmm. i honestly haven't but i know when i'm able to i create some time to just chill and to to relax but i do other things to relax i i swim swimming is so so resting mm. it's so so relaxing to me so maybe that's mm. better than netflix to me right mm. yeah mm. Than netflix i love that yeah. i love that. Mm. i love that because i think allow me to share like i think when i was in campus the one thing i would wait for to get to the weekend oh my god i'm going to binge watch like all the movies you can you know you go with a flash disk because that time well we were not netflixing we were not streaming anything you go with a flash disk you get all of your movies together and then the week comes your assignments are not done you're probably feeling stuck because your work is not done and then somehow you you, you can start attributing oh maybe other people are luckier other people other people are better or what not but i think this like what i'm hearing from you is that it will really have to come from a place of you're making a choice you have to be conscious of what kind of responsibility do you have in the present what time do you have 
stop saying that you do not have time and yet somehow you have binge watched everything. <laughs> I feel like I'm stepping on a lot of tools here because we have a lot of people here from Nairobi University, MKU Strath. We appreciate all of you, but today what we are saying is if you're going to go through rebirth, my friend, it's going to take time and it's going to require our like very active effort to do that. So Kerry, I want to ask another question that um, I still had around the whole topic of rebirth. So we have talked, I have seen your journey from like places you've been stuck, especially with music writing. You know, I'm, I'm still trying to believe that. Um, but then now, so here comes, you have someone who's here and they're wondering, okay, fine. Maybe I may want to go and start working on my change and improve myself, but like, where do I start? So my question to you would be, are there programs you have taken in your life that you feel have been your support systems in seasons of rebirth or when you're changing and you're going through transition? Uh, please unmute, please unmute. <laughs> Thank you. I'll keep doing that because I'm still, like literally I moved house yesterday. So like mm. my bed just came in today, everything is coming in. I had to like order food because we're not cooking. I mean, we just started, so I'm sorry. Um, first of all, can I address someone on the chats? Because this person yes. needs to be addressed. Yeah. They said what they hear from me is more arrogant. And I'm glad you've said that because you need to work on you internally because why does that challenge you in that kind of way, in a negative way? So you have a lot of work to do and you're called redeemed. You actually need to be redeemed. Okay, back to the to the question. I forgot how the question was. I just need to address the question. That was about me. What have okay? Let's start with what have been your support systems, especially oh, yes, when it. you're going yes. through hard times. Yes, mm. yes, yes. I have it. I have it. First of all, you asked what what are uh, resources or what sources have I gotten to to enable me to do what I do and how I do it. I did in 2017, intentional yes. living by John Maxwell very very good course and one of the taglines is good intentions are not enough you can't just have a good intention it's like someone who sees you carrying something heavy and they're like can i help you if you actually wanted to help me you would be upstanding holding it and helping me so good intentions are not enough we need to step out of i really wanted to apply for i really wanted to join this club i really no good intentions are not enough you need to put in the work you need to wake up and do the work um support i've gotten would be encouraging myself in the lord <laughs> because I'm telling you, people are struggling with so many things. You're bringing your small issues for God told me I'd be a millionaire in 2023. They don't hear that stuff. Them themselves, they're struggling. So another thing we make a mistake mm. is tell people our dreams. Yet God is one who has put those things inside us. And only we can be able to know how to achieve them. It's like what Joseph did. Yes, it worked out for his good at the end. He needed to be in the pit to end up in the palace and to the prison to end up again in the palace. So um, I, I've really learned a huge lesson from, from Joseph's story and from David's story as well. Um, to really just work with God, but also I have mentors. I have people who call me out and they, they tell me, Apo umelalia maskio. Mm. Ama, why are you still doing X, Y, and Z? Their habits I've had to let go of. Their, their things I've had to let go of really the hard way in fact one of the reasons why i stopped watching a lot of tv is i'm the one who needs to be watched on tv so i need to work hard so that people can watch me on tv not me and that's where my money is because my gift one of my gifts is acting and all that so i want to be watched on tv so i'm working towards it very hard mm. uh, i also know one other skill that helps me is called delayed gratification Delayed gratification is where you don't reward yourself for work that's not been done. You don't eat out daily and you've not made any money this week. You don't watch a movie and you haven't finished your work. Watching a movie should be a reward of ile kitu memaliza kufanya. 
So until you accomplish something, then now you can be able to reward yourself. So stop rewarding yourself too early. Mm. Pay the price, then go and get the reward. Mm. Yeah. Ooh. So delayed oh, gratification God. has mm. been a huge support to, to achieving what I need to do, yeah. I love that. I love what you have shared that it's from first choosing, you know, you don't reward yourself too early. I think, I think ours, I think someone is even saying that um, like watching so much was also a, st a stumbling block for me. Anyways, like I have noted that a lot of people usually do not like to, you know, you don't want to be told that actually <laughs> the way to get up is to get up. There are no, there are no two ways to it. And I love that you have mentors who hold you accountable, people who hold you accountable as well. And maybe my question still around the support you have gotten. I love that you said you have done a program, intentional living as well. So that brings me to something I would like to share with everyone who is present here, that actually at Lapid Leaders Africa, one of the things that we do very intentionally is that we connect people with mentors and coaches that can help them, you know, like work, work on their own journeys, map out what they want to do, then go to the nitty gritties of how do you actually get that done? And so I would like to invite everybody present to please take note of the fact that we have just opened our applications for the applications for the April cohort. So that means first you have time to plan. I think Kerry has spoken. I think Kerry, you have said more than like I could ever say. If you want to do things, go and get things that are going to support you. Don't stay in the house and then say, oh, me, I don't even have mentors. You know, actually one of the greatest questions we get is so, how do I get a mentor? But how will you get mentors if you're not even in spaces where mentors can be found? Where, like, how would you get, for example, how would I ever get to know you, someone like you, Kerry, if I don't even try to reach out to you? You know, um, let me divert, one last diversion. Actually, how I got, how we got to be here today, it was through a daring DM on Instagram. You know, people might be thinking, ah, Rispa is so connected. Connected, well, it's, it's that idea of be bold, be, go ahead, try. You have nothing to lose. And with Lapid Leaders Africa, I feel that I have become part of where I am through the programs I have done. Kerry, you can attest to the fact that a lot of us become better out of the kind of work and spaces we allow ourselves to get involved in. And so with that, I would like to announce, do, 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 do. please go and check out all our social media platforms. The application link is open. Join Lapid Leaders Africa. We have very intense programs, but they are good for you. They are intense by design so that everyone is more prepared for the work that they are going to do. Because clearly, Kerry Kenya Unasemani at life is hard. Like life is not going to become like responsibilities don't become easier or you don't get to do just one thing that oh first mm -hmm. I am in school then I will work then I will have a family like all of them happen together so the better you're able to prepare yourself you know the earlier you are going to be better off and redeem your time because that's something I've noted is very very key for you redeeming your time through the choices you make through the kind of things that you allow yourself to do. So maybe let me move to, I'm coming actually to the end of our, uh, our interview and I'm glad that we've been able to do this. So some, another question that I had for you, you mentioned that there's a lot of things you've had to give up to be carry. I'd like to hear some of the things that you've had to give up to be carry in the spirit of sacrificing for a better river for yourself. Um, last year, I had an opportunity to go through coaching. So I registered with a coach. It cost, it cost, it cost. So there was no more Boba Tees and KFC. All of them gave them up to be able to afford to pay for a, a life coach. And that has changed my entire life. How I see things, what I know. Um, choosing the pain of regret or the pain of putting in the work of discipline. It's actually discipline. And I think discipline should just be the work. 
uh, and the name of, of this uh, game, being disciplined, being thorough, being thorough. Thorough ni watu Americans. But yes, being thorough. I've had to give up um, some friendships. Very, very mm. sad. And that has been painful because I realized now up tunaenda, tunafanya, eh, tuko. <laughs> um, that was very, very hard. I've had to to give up things that I like, like um, food, certain food that actually makes you lazy and very a blob. You know what I'm talking about? Not weight-wise, and I'm not body shaming anyone, but this food that just makes you inactive, like it's so just good for you for whatever reason. Uh, I've had to give up. Um, I've had to give up the some events that I do that are not in line with my 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 current purpose and so that's what i was telling you guys saying no is very healthy i've i've had to learn how to say no and that no is a complete sentence it doesn't need any additions any no because of many it's just no or no that doesn't fit me at this time or no this is not the season for this for me but kindly consider me another time. And that's only if I genuinely want to be considered for another time. Mm. So I'd say those are some of the things I've had to um, let go of. Friendships. Mm. Bad habits. Oh, wow. I, I let go of my snooze button. I don't snooze anymore. The time I'm supposed to wake up is the time I wake up. So ile eight minutes, my cause is eight minutes. I don't know why it's so weird. I don't do it anymore. Mm. I don't snooze. Mm. When my alarm rings, my feet are mm -hmm. off the bed. Mm. Yep. Wow. Thank you so much. Because I think I think people, or at least even I, I would I would be wrong to say it's just other people. Even I, I think sometimes I have had misconceptions about what changing really is uh because it you know you imagine you hear self you hear the word sacrifice but then it's like we haven't processed between nice words like sacrifice and what sacrificing really looks like this like uh at some point we have a disconnect between how the two look and i'm i'm glad for you you have specific things like Hey, losing the snooze button that's <laughs> that's insane and that's also very courageous um that's definitely something i need to go giving up after this you know <laughs> the day i get to meet you i'll tell you if my, my snooze button is now over you know um but maybe uh something just off of just to get to know more about you even as we come to the end of today's interview is uh, so now, what does your typical day look like without a watch you used to have before? I would imagine, uh, I don't know, maybe it's different, but yeah, I'm curious to hear. Well, right now, my rhythm has completely changed because I'm not on a, on a work schedule. So mm -hmm. my typical day would start with morning devotion. I wake up, I have the, I do you version, but I also do a proverb a day and I also do an excerpt. So I make my own excerpts because I know there are times that will come where I'll need to be sharing the word of God consistently. So I'm preparing me for it now. So like I'll have, mm -hmm. I have this book where if I just open, I have a full sermon um, mm -hmm. through, of course, the help of the Holy Spirit. I cannot take credit for this, mm -hmm. please. But yes, I do a proverb a day. And then um, depending on the day, like I try to put most of my meetings in the morning I've been trying to avoid evening meetings because in the evening I want to prepare for the next day. I don't want to be doing, you know, just staying up. Um, previously, up to last week, I was in a strategic planning class. So prepare for my strategic planning class, do the assignment that is needed. Um, I don't have a fitness routine yet, which is really, really bad. But um, I'm trying to inculcate that in coming March. I feel like March is a rebirth for me. 
And as I say this, I want you guys to, to really, really get on board with LAPID because I feel like this is a very, very good space for anyone who wants to lead themselves and know themselves better. So just throwing that shameless plug for LAPID leaders um, in there. Uh, so right right now i just have strategy meetings i just set up a business which i'm looking forward to to sharing with the world but it's not yet born so i can't really talk about it um so i do a little strategy for that and then like literally the day i'm also trying to deliberately visit and talk to family and relatives in this year I really want to connect with people more than just we share a last name. So I'm mm. like literally scheduling time to call, like it'll be like call Aunt Mombi. And then I take time to call. Mm. Or if it's a physical visit, go. Mm. That probably you can physically just walk into the house mm. there, but that probably you need to call. Um yeah, I don't know if there's anything I've left out that I do, but yeah, my days right now they're very it's only Friday, which I, I have a permanent assignment, which is um, rehearsal for the rough. And then now Saturday, uh, uh, 4 p.m. call time, makeup, prepare, go live at 7. Right now, yeah, my days are being very fluid, but those ones I have to do every day, consistently. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, my, I can screenshot my app for you guys. I've done it consistently. I don't know if I leave this page, it'll show you. I don't think so. I don't think I can leave this page. But yes, it, it actually gives you a tick, like a streak for every day you do it. Oh, mm. and I'm also learning Spanish. So I do it every day as well Um, on an app called Duolingo. So very mm. soon I will be completely fluent, but now I'm still learning Um, ah. how to order in a restaurant, how to how to speak to people yeah i'm still i'm still in the fundamentals i'm actually in i think that i mean that step mm. wow yep. i love that yeah your life just feels fucked i hope that is actually what it's doing is encourage us to feel that perhaps we have more time than we think we do it to evaluate funny what's me am i doing with my time that you know someone like Carrie is able to do all of these things and still look fly while at it. Like, <laughs> uh, I really, really, really like that. Um, so maybe there's someone who's asking here, Carrie, which strategic planning classes did you take? That's Annette Hongo. Oh yeah, I actually did them with church. Unfortunately, they're only once a year. So you'll have to register for next year. Maybe you can send me a DM and I can hook you up, but we're graduating on Sunday. So yeah, it was a strategic planning class, yeah. So oh, okay. if you could slide on my DM, um, Kerika Giri, I can hook you up, but they're not doing another cohort this year, unfortunately. They want to do it in January. I tried to push. I'm like, guys, people need this. People need this. But they were like, yeah, we are also strategically planning our own lives, so we can't do it twice a year. <laughs> our year is planned for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, all right. Thank you so much. Um, so Annette, Umeskia, Habarin Doyo, you know. So uh Kerry, maybe the last question. So someone is here probably okay, they're not encouraged by now. Someone who perhaps feels stuck, but they are ready, ready to step out into, you know, the jungle that is change. What kind of encouragement would you like to give them as we come to a close? Awesome. And as, as we do that, I also saw someone asking what books they can read. Uh, please check out 12 Hour Week. Check out Chasing the Lions. Check out 5 a.m. Club. Check out Eat That Frog. Those are the four I can do for now. Um, someone who is feeling stuck, I'll say, show up for yourself. Show up for yourself show up for yourself Akinon will show up for you it's for you wake up on those days that you don't feel like going that's a day kwanza you need to wake up even earlier and do it on the days you feel low get up me one thing that i do that that helps me brushing my teeth brushing my teeth i can't go back to bed after brushing my teeth 
So the days when I don't feel like completely, completely, I'm feeling I'm unable to. Nda brush meno, ni amke kabisa. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for that. I feel someone, someone is celebrating you here on the chat. His name is Cyrilo. He's saying shout out to Kerry. I have made so much progress since she hosted me and handed me male artist of the year 2020 on stage. Blessings. Proud wow. to be in Lapid right now. You know? Wow. Yeah. So I'm very, I'm very glad yeah, to hear that. And so with that, I think we are coming to a close. I'd like to hear from my colleague, Frank. Do we have any questions on LinkedIn that can be answered by Kerry? Please unmute and tell us so that we know. Uh, All right. No questions at the moment. All right. Okay. So thank you so much for that. So to our LinkedIn people, as we have mentioned, Lapid Leaders Africa applications are now open for the April cohort. You want to join a community of people that will help you get up, wake up and show up for yourself. Kerry, I don't think we could have ended on a better note if, if like no one is going to show up. And literally, it's like, there's no magic. You know, we were waiting. Oh, give me the magic broom. Like, uh, <laughs> I love the way you're shaking your head. So, like, there's no magic. And aggressive. There's no, okay, guys, there's mm. no magic. If I, I, I don't know if I had a moment to share this, but how I got my job at Hope and I got to serve on Hope FM is I woke up and I showed up at the office and said, I want to see the head of radio. Can I talk to her? That was like the okay, it wasn't like the main mm. way, but like it was a first step into that place. I I left the house, I stopped listening to the station. I was like, okay, nenda ku idea. Nenda kusoma. Nenda ku nenda ku kuongelesha someone who I can and and I went there with a solution. Young people, you have so many opportunities. If you see a gap in an organization, you can go with a solution. Go come up with ideas. Tell them you can do this. You can do this. You can do this. Go with a solution. Mm. Go with a solution, you know? Yeah, and I love that because there's someone earlier who had said, I have applied for internships. I've just been getting rejects. Um, maybe I can tell you a story on all our behalf, but perhaps it's to now think about all the organizations you've applied to. Is it that you wanted to take from them? Or is it that you are presenting a solution that they would find, ah, you know what? It would be impossible for us to not work with this kind of a person. So maybe it's even how we are communicating. I don't think we are as helpless as sometimes we may feel, but it's good to be in such a platform that helps you see that, by the way, you're good. You have a lot to offer. So think what's in your hand, you know? What's in your hand? Just like Moses was, you know, I just think about highlight. that, look at that. I'd mm -hmm. like to share that I have been rejected so many times. Like the jobs I've applied for. Mm. Yeah, the more rejections you get, the closer you are to the right thing for you. And it's okay. Rejection is not personal. Don't take rejection personal. Mm. Like if they say no, it's okay. It was just not the right place for you. But it's a place where you mm. step in and it's such a good fit for that season. And you'll prosper and you will also give. Not only take, most of us just want to take, 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 take. Mm, all right. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much for that. Um, so someone was saying, please repeat the books. Um, I think it was 12 hour week, chasing the lions, 5 a.m. club, and eat that frog. Um, all right. Any career advice? Okay. Because you're here, and I know that uh -huh. I have only like five more minutes to be any career yes. advice. Career advice. I think we think should join Lapid. Start by joining Lapid. Get equipped. Get equipped for the, the right job. Don't do any job because other people are doing it or it's the best thing. Do it. Mm -hmm. Do it because it's what you know how to do and it's what you're gifted in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just do it for the right mm -hmm. reasons. Mm -hmm. Um and always get equipped. Yeah. If you have a chance to grow, to learn, to, 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 to get better, to expand, take it. Mm. Mm. Ooh, 
cool. Wow, thank you so much. I think as everyone present can see on the screen, this is a poster for our uh, for our applications to join our classes. As you can see, the goal is to reinvent yourself. So we did not just invite Kerry at the out of, oh, you know, Kerry is nice. Yes, she is, but also the, what I like about you, Kerry, is that they're so testament to your grit to your resilience in going through processes. And I'm so glad that you've mentioned you've gone through a lot of rejections to the point now where you finally got your job. Literally, as Kerry has said, there is no magic. It's joint spaces that can grow you, walk with people that challenge you, that, that, you know, that are going to push you out of your comfort zone and show up for yourself. So we welcome every one of you to go onto all our social media platforms. You are going to find the application link there, just as, as it has been shared here. If you're ready to reinvent yourself, then this is the place for you to join. Kerry, I would like to so, so, so sincerely thank you for doing this. It's thank been you. such an honor for me personally to host you. I wonder if I could see a CEO, Esther Moniki. I don't know if she's here. Esther, are you here? If you're here by any chance, I'd really love maybe for her to be the last person who gives us a vote of thanks as well as, you know, welcomes everyone to the Lapid community. Um, all right, but I'm confirming that she's here. Maybe as she does, you can check out the chats on the chats. We have shared the application link there. So go, go crazy, have fun. Come, let's do hard things. Honestly, <laughs> that's the mantra around here. Do hard things. There's no like adulting is adulting is just doing hard things. There's no, there's no any other way except that is the way. Um, all right, so I don't, I can't seem to see that Esther is here, but that's completely okay. I think we'll have an occasion for all of us to meet. So on the behalf of the entire Lapid Leaders Africa team, I would like to thank every one of us that has attended this webinar. It has been such, such a joy to host all of you. The ones who joined us on LinkedIn, Manze, thank you so much. We appreciate your support and we look forward to hosting more amazing things for you. And I would like to close with asking Give us one last word. Turn the to Kalale Basa. Show up for yourself. Mm. Show up for yourself. Mm. Wow. You had it. I, I have nothing else to add. Thank you so much, Kerry. I look forward to seeing you as I show up for myself more. Have a great evening and a wonderful week. And, you know, see you at the top, you know, because we are definitely going up, 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 up. All right, so, so, so Kerry, feel free to log out for now. If there's any other questions for you, we will definitely just forward them to you on DM. I love to Tajibuatu because more questions are coming just as we are going. But once again, thank you so much. Have a good evening and may God abundantly bless you. All right, so to all of us that are here, thank you so much for having taken this time to join our webinar today. Go on to all our social media platforms, share at least the thoughts that you have picked for yourself. I can see people posting things like it's show up for yourself. Others, it's I love you, Kerry. We shall, we shall share that to her. Um, others are saying I am highly inspired and I feel discovery is at the peak. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That's good. That's what we are. That's what we are all about here. Do hard things. That's the spirit as well. So thank you so much for sharing like all your thoughts. We appreciate. Like our social media pages. We are Lapid Leaders Africa on every single platform, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on LinkedIn. And for more opportunities like this, I would like to mention that literally we are doing 12 webinars in 12 months, just as I mentioned. So this was the second webinar of the year under the Rebirth series. So because you are already here, you guys are going to be the very first ones to be invited to the March edition of the Rebirth webinar, which will be taking place 
on the last Monday of March. So every last Monday of the month, just know there's going to be a rebirth webinar, Beloved Leaders Africa, and we would really, really, really love to host you guys for more amazing conversations like this. With that, I would like to ask, there's someone, Benson Rana. Benson Rana, are you here? If you're here, please indicate by hand so that my colleague Frank can spot you. Um, Benson Rana. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people I'm not able to see. Um, but all together, thank you, everybody. I guess I'm going to be asking my colleague Frank to close this room for all of us in the next one minute. So please say all your goodbyes and we look forward to seeing you. We look so forward to seeing all of your applications to the LAPID program. And we look forward, of course, to hosting you in March for the March edition of the Rebirth webinar series. This is Lapid Leaders Africa, where we ignite the progress of young people through programs and mentorship and training that is meant to completely elevate their minds. Rana Benson, as people are logging out, this is still a place of honor. I would like to request you to share your piece with us on the power of ownership. Rana Benson, I think Frank, you could help Rana to unmute. He will do a short piece in two minutes so that we close at 8.30. Um, hello, everyone. Hello, Rana. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Please proceed. Okay. Um, first of all, I'm much happy. I feel I partake more from Kerry. So I hope he, also everybody has also have the same. So I'll not take time. Let me, let me go direct to what I'm supposed to do. So I have a piece of poem it, and it's about a power of ownership. So why, 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 why the power of ownership? Um, you know, the ownership of the ownership of where you are in life ensure a better future. So I decided to come up with a piece of um, a poem. So um, it is like it goes like this. So I will do more. Um, only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And what I can do. I ought to do, and what I ought to do, by the grace of God, I will do. I will do more than be I will do more than belong. I will participate. I will do more than care. I will help. I will do more than believe. I will practice. I will do more than being fair. I will be kind. I will do more than dream. I will work. I will do more than teach. I will inspire. I will do more than earn, I will enrich. I will do more than give, I will serve. I will do more than believe, I will grow. I will do more than talk, I will act. I will do more than good, I will be good for something. Thank you, everybody. Woo! Oh my God, wait, what? I should have called you so early. That was excellent, Rana. Thank you so much. Um, I also have a piece about fear. So Danish Akombo, I love that you have it and I would like you to keep it actually so that I can book you for our next for our next episode. Someone is saying that I need that poem. Martin, I love that indeed you you would like that poem. So Rana, Kazi Kwako, you will need to, we will post your poem on the Lapid platform as well as on your platform as collaborators. So Martin, just keep an eye out for a Lapid Leaders Africa post around the poetry piece that was done on the power of ownership by Benson Rana. 
who is actually an alumni of the LAPID program. To Danish Akombo, I love that you have a piece. Usually we like to vet anything before it's presented and also because of time, we are, we are going to just keep your piece. I will check it out for when we are doing our next rebirth webinar in the month of March. But with that, I really, really appreciate every one of us that has been here. My colleague Frank will share the his screen and show us the application link once again for the next two minutes. And then he's going to close this uh, meeting for all of us. May God bless all of you. May you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful night and a new, a great new month by the way, because we're going to March. I hope that Lapid Leaders Africa can be your partners throughout this year as you reinvent yourself for success. Thank you so much, Frank, colleague, over to you we would really like to hear and see what the application photo looks like.